Bauer Academy, where industry, education and business mix. Hi, we are Amy Dunn, Emily Greenwood and Safia Monk. Making other people doing something sexual without their consent is not okay. If you are a victim of sexual assault, immediately tell someone, even if it's too hard. You won't regret it when you do. Even teenagers can sexually abuse their parents. It's not only adult on adult, it can be adult on child, child on adult, adult on adult and child on child. Remember, you are not alone even if you feel it. There will always be someone who listens because it's a serious matter. Sexual abuse is making people do something sexually which they do not want to do or making someone watch sexual material on the internet or television. If someone makes you do anything like this, try and contact someone you trust, such as a member of family. Hi girls, Uh, my name's Eve Thomas. I am a domestic abuse specialist and I was also a victim of domestic abuse for 21 years and I'm here today to share my experiences with you. Was it a member of your family who abused you? It was, yes. It was, well, well, not my family. It was the man that I married and had children with, so my husband, yes. What type of abuse did you have? It was domestic abuse, coercive control, and there was sexual abuse in there as well. How do you now help victims for being abused? What I've done is I have worked with some specialists, um, some professionals, some former police officers, some legal people, and together we have done a lot of research and we are now basically now ready to release this single point of contact service to the UK. It's going to be very specialist for domestic abuse victims and sexual violence and abuse victims. Um, And we're going to make sure that we start keeping victims safe so that when they report, because when you report to the police and you leave, your risk doesn't go away, it usually goes higher because you are trying to take that control back. You've reported, you've broke that silence, you've come, you've gone through that front door and told somebody and then it becomes a bit of a struggle um, and that's when stalking and harassment can start as well. So it's really, really important to report it to the police to tell somebody. Did you ever feel like you should contact someone while you was in this situation? I did, yes, and I did many times. The police came, social services came, lots of people came, but I either went back or I was brought back. Um, so it took two years to plan to leave in 2010. It took two years of planning, but seven years on, here I am. It worked. <laughs> How did you get out of your situation or what made it stop? Making it stop was by leaving and telling somebody, by telling the police, by sitting down with some pretty amazing police officers and having that trust to tell them. And that was my first step. And then lots of other professionals came in to help as well. Lots of professionals came in to help my children. And together with them, we were able to get through court and we were able to get through, like I say, lots, you know, the after effects and the aftershocks of it. How did you get into the situation in the first place? I fell in love. He was gorgeous, he was very handsome, he was the catch of where I lived, of the town where I lived, all the girls liked him, really, really charming, so funny, really funny, he was really nice, he bought me things, he took me places, he treated me like a princess, but that was all part of his his game to, to get that control, and as soon as he'd got that, it's called love bombing, we call it, as soon as that love bombing was over and done with, You know, the first time he hit me, I ran away. I went back to my mum and he came for me and he said, I'm so sorry, and he was crying. So I took him back and that's how it becomes then a cycle until you can't leave and it takes a lot to leave. Did getting abuse change you in any way? Yes. It made me... I was strong before. I've always been quite a willful woman. My uh, work for social services and the education and the NHS... So I've always been, you know, a career and very outspoken lady. But yes, it absolutely, I was very quiet. I never spoke. I was broken. I was broken physically. I was broken mentally. It took a lot of hard work to get where I am now. But there is life after domestic abuse. There is life after sexual abuse. What age did you start to get abused? I was 23 when I met him. 
and I stayed for 21 years. It lasted for 21 years. Uh, how are you meant to contact someone if he takes you fair enough here or doesn't let you leave the house or anything? Well, this is what happened for a long time. I mean, this was before mobile phones as well. I mean, mobile phones were, you know, towards the end, but mobile phones, a mobile phone is your best, best safety thing that you've got. Keep it charged. You can always phone the police. You can phone 999 101. You can phone your mum. You can phone anybody from your phone. But phones and things like that were taken away. The house phone was taken away. If there was violence or an attack, it would be removed so I couldn't phone the police. The doors and windows would be locked so I couldn't get out. Um, and like I say, I mean, it took a lot to leave and it, it took that two years of planning and, and to do it safely, to be able to leave safely.